Welcome to Crema Media's Resources Watch, a weekly video roundup of the events and people making and shaping the news in the mining industry. This week, Sassel decelerates its coal to liquids project pending clarity on carbon capture and refinery. Slow transformation in South Africa fuels the nationalization debate. And Avenge talks to us about its acid mine drainage solutions. Energy and Chemicals Group Sassel said that its coal to liquid project, Project Mafuta in South Africa's Limpopo province, wouldn't progress into the feasibility phase within the originally envisaged timeline, pending clarity on the large-scale coal gasification tests and the provision of a commercially viable carbon capture and storage solution. The other big one on the list is Mafuta in pre-feasibility. And uh, I sincerely believe that this is a project that we want to do. It's a project that I think the country needs. This, is, of course, is the big coal to liquids plant in the Limpopo province that we have been working on. However, we must also say candidly that we need to make sure the coal is appropriate for our technology and we are busy with tests as we speak. We also need to find a storage solution, solution for the CO2 and we haven't done that yet. You'll see there's something in the newspaper about CO2 or quick storage maps uh, in the country that our minister has just released. But we have to find a carbon, you know, given Copenhagen, we no choice. We've got to find a storage solution for Mafuta. And then thirdly, government has a lot of demands on its fiscus. So we need to see where Mafuta figures in the priority list that, that government has. And we trust we'll have more clarity on that later this year. Slow transformation in South Africa's mining industry has sparked and is driving the debate around the nationalization of the country's mines. Mining Weekly's Loni Prinsloo takes a closer look. South Africa's mining charter has a set target of 15% black ownership of mines by 2009 and 26% by 2014. However, after a review of the charter in 2009, it became evident that these targets for black empowerment would not be reached. The South African Mining Development Association chairperson Chaka Malloy says that the underachievement of black empowerment in mining has now ignited the debate around the nationalization of the country's mines. The review of the charter has indicated to a large extent that we have not achieved the objective that we have set midway through to the charter and actually that it is unlikely that we will achieve our objectives in 2014, which was, which was the shelf life of the mining charter. And certainly uh, the fact that we are not moving as fast and deep, as enough, as, as, and deep enough as we want with transformation has started a number of peripheral policy debates. And certainly all the issues that, that we are tackling with at the moment, the establishment of the state mining company, the debate around nationalization, and all these issues are saying to us that uh, we need to do something and need to do something very fast in terms of ensuring that transformation happens and that transformation that is happening is actually deep and meaningful. The Department of Mineral Resources at the moment is actually going through the process of reviewing the law, firstly, the Minerals and Petroleum Resources Development Act, and also reviewing the mining charter itself. That review fundamentally will clarify the issues in the police that were not clear, that were subject to interpretation, but also will strengthen the uh, administrative process in government to ensure that the law is implemented, is evaluated and also monitored on an ongoing, on ongoing basis. It's unlikely that the targets will be changed themselves, but I think uh, the law is going to be stricter, it's going to be clearer, so that we eliminate any chances of, of misinterpretation and as I've said that the implementation mechanisms uh, will be reinforced. Having sipped from a bottle containing water previously contaminated by acid mine drainage, Avenge CEO Roger Jardine spoke to Engineering News about the problem and the company's offering. Our engineers have patented a process called the HyPro process, which is a high precipitation reverse osmosis uh, process. Um, we, our reclamation rates are 98%, our recovery rates 
uh, the global benchmark is about 85%. We, we believe we are globally competitive when it comes to the application of membranes and technology, well, membrane technology in acid mine drainage. We have tended up till now to focus on providing solutions to the private sector. Uh, we have applied our technology in Namibia at the Arongo desalination plant for Arriva, where a portion of that uh, water will go into the municipal water grid to provide potable water for uh, the local community. We also have a water treatment facility for Optimum Coal and at Emilaslini for BHP uh, and um, Anglo. So, you know, we are developing a track record in this area of acid mine drainage and we believe that we are positioned to be part of the solution and we look forward to engaging with all stakeholders, in, particularly, uh, in particular government, to, to deal with this pressing issue. But at Avenge, we are geared, it's an area we want to grow into. Um, our desalination plant is the largest in southern Africa. Our acid mine drainage uh, work is, is proving, uh, it's proven and it's working. So as that becomes um, uh, implemented, we'll be ready. For mining news as it breaks, stay logged on to miningweekly.com and register for our free daily newsletter.